Back in 2008, Boris Johnson openly compared himself to the Roman Republican hero, Cincinnatus, who in the 5th century BC, after having twice held supreme power as dictator of Rome, resigned his office to return to a humble life as a farmer. On hearing Boris Johnson's speech, Steve Richards predicted that if that man ever becomes Prime Minister, he'll be the new Vortigern, Superbus Tyrannus, not Cincinnatus. Vortigern is remembered in British Welsh history and myth as Superbus Tyrannus, the tyrant who took over Britain when it left the Roman Empire ultimately betraying Britain and its people to its enemies. The exit of Britain from the Roman Empire has eerie parallels with Johnson's handling of the UK's 2016 Brexit from the EU. Steve's prediction was based on his knowledge of Jungian collective psychology. He'd made similar predictions before, among others, about the Berlin Wall and the fate of Soviet Presidents Gorbachev and Yeltsin. What would happen in China, Tiananmen Square and in Hong Kong after it was returned to Chinese control? The nature of Tony Blair's premiership and what has happened in the European Union. What follows is taken from our Discord server where Steve regularly engages in a dialectic with our members. In Boris Johnson's resignation speech a few minutes ago, he references instincts and the herd deciding to move. He also references the wonderful Darwinian system of politics. Freud seeks Adler. Adler conceals Freud. Jung inflates and falls victim to both. Johnson, years ago, fantasised about being like the great Roman Cincinnatus. At that time, years ago, I said that, quote, if he ever becomes Prime Minister, he'll become the new Vortigern, Superbus Tyrannus. Vortigern is remembered in British Welsh history as an inflated tyrant who took over at the time Britain left the Roman Empire and subsequently betrayed the people. Johnson's classical Roman fantasies predicted his future trajectory, including the drama of his fall. He played it like he was in the Roman Senate, rather than a parliamentary democracy. He even tried to master the trickster, which, of course, turned against him. When personal myths become inflated by collective ones, the sure and certain footprints of Darwin follow close behind those of Freud. Johnson's personal life and morality innovated his political one, Freud seeks Adler. He concealed, until he no longer could, his Freudian drives, Adler conceals Freud. He inflated with collective ideas of self-reference that he could neither sustain nor contain. Jung inflates. Then he fell victim to Adler. He was overpowered by the power drive of others, whilst attempting to reduce everything to his personal gratification. Freud. Steve then continued. The other point of note from Johnson's speech was his awareness of the importance of instincts, the herd, and Darwin. As we've pointed out in our two Discord servers and in Young to Live By videos and IPSA professional training seminars, instinct is the most important and economical level at which to deliver suggestion. Hence how recent events globally have seen the mass utilization of suggestion by referential threat to instincts. Resistance to such tyranny has to arise from within instinct. Steve continued, 
as pointed out in previous posts, here and in the last Discord, and in the other media mentioned above, politicians believe, through auto-suggestion, that they are in control of their own drives in service of personal gratification, disguised as higher calling. They are not. There's a case study in the Personal Myth Guide that gives the example of Jung's diagnosis of Hitler, but places it into a collective, genomic level regulatory process that is utterly unconscious psychologically, but overwhelmingly conscious in a superpositioning sense as an informational field phenomenon. Politicians are subsumed to a dynamic they have no understanding of beyond their Freud, Adler, Jung psychodynamics. And even then, they just read their gratification and inflation as being their only teleology. The real meaning of superpositioned informational consciousness needs to be grasped. It's actually quite simple. <laughs>